here, they get fabulous writers, well-known writers, um, writers who are accomplished in their fields, and I learn a lot from them. As a writer myself and as a teacher, I learn a lot, and besides the pleasure factor. I like the fact that I'm able to network with other writers and learn from them. And as a young writer starting out, it's an invaluable experience, especially if I wish to make this my, my career when I'm older. This is my mental vacation. It is. Not only do I love literature, and I studied it as an undergrad, um, it frees you from everyday life, and everyone is so accessible and friendly, and I see the same people every year, and I look forward to that. I mean, it's really one of the best endowed writers conferences in the country, and brings just like a tremendous uh, you know, group of people here to North Dakota. Um, so I, th I think that it's one of the great assets of the institution. And actually, the Writers' Conference is a big reason why I chose this school um, over some of the other schools that accepted me. Being in a place like this that fosters creative writing, that brings creative writers to campus, is amazing. And um, it's an opportunity that not a lot of other schools offer. Um, so it's really unique here. I've been very impressed that UND has had the caliber of speakers, always cutting edge, world renowned. Um, it is a coup for authors to get asked to come to speak here because it's so well respected. Crystal Alberts who set these things up, she is a wonder to find these people, bring them together in a theme, and then have the discipline to be able to get everybody to do what they were uh, supposed to do and provide that interaction. It's you aren't going to be able to find it any other place than here at the University of North Dakota. So a question from the audience, to what extent do you write with the intent that it will have an effect on your reader, or is that only a hope? I don't have any imaginary, idealized reader out there in, in my mind. Um, I just try to be true to something that I think I would like as a reader. Um, and it's not the reason I do that is not because my taste is so great. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you start deviating from that, that's when you start becoming often less authentic, I think. But I used to have a Victorian maiden in a white nightgown who would sort of hijack my poems and go on <laughs> endlessly kind of like this on her, on her fainting couch. And um, I really had to learn at some point to become aware of her. And it would take me sometimes many, many drafts to get all traces of her out and her slightly histrionic voice out of, out of the poem. And now I think she's pretty much gone, but every once in a while I still find her putting her toe into the poem, and I'm like, love that toe. <laughs> Another question from the audience, how has failure changed you and changed your writing? I mean, I remember the, the the negatives of my reviews, I can I can say them line for line, I, and I don't remember any positive ones. So I think that's sort of, um, you know, and then I also forget though that even to be reviewed though is a kind of triumph. It's 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 someone has respected you enough to to take seriously what you've written. When I started out as a writer, I the writers I admired, I admired for one book or that, you know, they, they just had made a big splash. But now I really have great respect for people who kind of just kept their nose to the grindstone over a long period of time. Um, and, and, you know, you might not even hear about them until their sixth book or something, but, uh, but the, the persistence was there in spite of everything.